Now you have a Mary and Joseph. And this, Christmas is always, for some of us, very romantic time, and it was. But as that, many of us didn't realize that Mary and Joseph are real human beings. They have real dream. They have real goals. They have real hope, except that their goals and their plan were shattered uh, this particular first Christmas. Now they have a good beginning, and they, you know, the when they got engaged, it's like a dream comes true. Remember, the, he fiddle on the roof, matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match, catch me a catch, find me a find. And Joseph found. <laughs> Sweetheart, Mary, and they got engaged. Man, they was excited. They were on cloud nine, and they booked the village <laughs> hall. And uh, perhaps Mary set up the Instagram. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, a notice at the village grocer. And uh, man, they planned to have a grand wedding, a honeymoon, all planned, and could have been cannily <laughs> surfing. <laughs> But all this was shattered when one day Mary came to Joseph and said, "Hi, Joe. I got news for you. I'm pregnant, but it's not your child, huh?" <laughs> I can't imagine Joseph would not believe, and anyone ever would not believe, and he was thinking to nicely break up the engagement when the angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, "Hey, <laughs> Joseph, what Mary said was correct. That child that she carry." Is a child born of the Holy Spirit. In fact, the Bible describes is describe the child as the only begotten Son of God. A pastor, you mean God? Uh, uh, God got married and then they produce a child? No, no, no. Only begotten in the original language Greek, monogenes, simply means the only one that carries the very gene of God. That's who Jesus Christ is. God coming down in human form. Why do you think He came? Now, um, just about this time,、um, uh, there was a decree from Augustus Caesar, the Roman emperor. He wanted to do a census. Population says everybody to go back to the hometown. And Joseph came from Bethlehem. He has to go. And now Mary is already eight months pregnant. Is about to deliver. And、you got to go, hundred and fifty kilometers. There is no train, no plane. <laughs> they're riding on a donkey. By the time they reach, that them, they were exhausted. But not to add <laughs> to that, it was about to give birth. There was no room for them. Now you know why we sing Silent Night, because Mary was silent the whole night. Because Joseph forgot to book a hotel, <laughs> and there was no room at all. Even the relative, can I imagine? They were exhausted, they were tired, and there was no room for them. And、uh, finally, they found an animal feeding place. We call it the manger, and that's where Mary was born. I said, Christmas story is not just about fairy tale. These are real people. I can imagine Mary and Joseph feeling disappointed. Their plan was shattered. No honeymoon, but now in this miserable, smelly little manger. I can imagine they were feeling distressed. I mean, I mean, I, I can imagine exhausted after 150 kilometers on a donkey, no room. Must be very distressed, but above all, dejected. Because there was no room for them, I imagine Mary and Joseph asked God, "God, you say the child is the Son of God, only begotten Son. How come? What is all this happening? Why?" <laughs> Maybe some of you are going through same thing: disappointment, distress, dejection, having emerged from COVID, and now we hear news about the new wave coming in. Let me tell you this. I, I declare and believe it's going to go down in January. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah! But many of us go through challenging situation, emerging out of COVID. I could imagine some of you feel mentally depleted, emotionally exhausted, and wondering why. Back to the story, Mary Joseph. Why God? And God told them. 
The Lord says, Why? Why? Bethlehem, why? Manger, why? No room. And God says to Mary and Joseph, That is the purpose of Christmas. Why? It's you. Why do we have the Christmas story? It's about you. Say it together, say it together with me. You. you. The whole message of Christmas. Why the Messiah come over a period of 1,500 years? 40 different prophets point to one person. Why the Messiah come? Why Christ come? Why the Son of God come? You. He came for you. And now everything is like uh, pieces of jigsaw puzzle coming together. Why? There was a census by Augustus Caesar. Why well, there was a population uh, census? Well, that people got to go back to their hometown. And, and Joseph had to go back to Bethlehem, where Christ is going to be born. Why Bethlehem? Bethlehem, those days, is the main center to produce the perfect, unblemished, spotless, sacrificial lamb for the temple sacrifice. Of course, the uh, lamb, the sacrificial lamb, is a picture of Christ, where he was sacrificed as a sin offering for us. Now, why um, uh, it was announced to the shepherd first? Because a shepherd would have known the purpose of Christ's coming. Because the shepherds in Bethlehem are no ordinary shepherd. They were there to, to produce the spotless, blameless lamb that could be used. But how many of us know that animal cannot make a perfect sacrifice? Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. And why they were rejected? Why there was no room for them? It's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing picture of our heart, your heart and my heart. We have no room for God. What happened is that in the beginning, God placed Adam and Eve in a place called Eden. Eden in the Hebrew original language simply means pleasure. It is this earth. God created the earth for you and me to enjoy. But one day, our forefather Adam and Eve chose not to have God. They have no rooms for God. This like Mary and Joseph. There was no room for them in their whole town. Can you imagine? All the relatives, don't bother about them. It's a picture of a human heart. And Adam said, I don't, have a, I don't have God in my life. I don't need God. And uh, that is the essence of sin. Man ignoring God. And how many of though, we are not going to enjoy this creation of God. Without him, <laughs> just like a refrigerator. I can give a refrigerator, but it's no use to you unless you <laughs> Google online all the gadgets, all the facility, uh, all the uh, things that is in the refrigerator, and you need the handbook. All right? If you have a problem, you <laughs> send an email to the manufacturer. Same way. In this earth, we're not going to enjoy this earth created by God unless you know him and his handbook, the Bible. And uh, so man has no room for God. But I must know that God didn't give up on us. And um, he came down 2,000 years ago and, um, to die for us. Now, why did he have to die for us? Isn't he a perfectly merciful God? Yes, he's merciful, but he's also a God of justice. If he just simply forgave, he's not going to be just. <laughs> You cannot be a just judge anymore. So he came up with a way, the only way he came down 2,000 years ago to die for us, to pay the extreme penalty that we deserve because of our sin. First Peter chapter 2 says, He himself carried in his body our sins onto the tree, the cross, that dying to sin, we might live to righteousness. By his wounds, you were healed. And uh, you saw how the typical Roman whip those days is called a cat of nine tails. It's a whip with nine different branches. And each of the branches carries uh, metal balls, 
sharp nails, broken pieces of bone, broken pieces of glass. It's all uh, tied to these uh, branches. And each of the whips are caused nine lines on your body. And of course, causing excruciating pain. And by, Bible tells us from, I told you, the prophesied hundreds of years before Christ came, he was given 39 lashes. If you multiply by nine, the nine branches, it would be 351 lines on the body. Can you just imagine? It's going to split apart the skin, exposing the bone. The prophet Isaiah uh, prophesied he was wounded beyond human recognition. In other words, this doesn't even look like a human being. That is amazing. Why did Jesus Christ have to go through all this for us? Let me this. These pains are excruciating. But the greatest pain is in Psalm 22, another psalm that is discovered in the Dead Sea. Scroll. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The pain, the 39 lashes, 351 lines are excruciating. But the most painful part, it's when God, the Father, was separated from God's own begotten Son. Up on the cross, that moment in pain, excruciating physical pain, the worst, he was separated from God, the Father. He cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? At that moment, the Father was separated from the Son. Why? That you and me, who have no rooms for God, like Mary and Joseph, no room for them in Bethlehem, can be reconciled with God. We are separate, Jesus is separated from God the Father, that we may be reconciled with God the Father. Now let me ask you this question. Why did Jesus go through all this? Why did God the Father let His Son die such a gruesome death, separated? Let me tell you this. Not because how good we are. It's because how good God is. The Bible tells us, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. The world in all its imperfection. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the reason why Christ came. That is the jigsaw puzzle that now we see together. Why a censor? Why in Bethlehem? Why of all the places, manger, animal feeding place? Why the shepherd were the first to hear the news? Let me tell you this. It all boils down to this. He loves you so much he became a sacrificial fisher lamb for us that we may experience amazing blessing despite of our bad, ugly choices. That you and me can receive the blessings of the cross. I summarize the cross with the word, the cross stick, C-R-O-S-S. The first C stands for complete forgiveness of all our sins. The other word, R, stands for restoration of your relationship with God. O stands for overflowing abundance S stands for supernatural healing. Another S stands for supernatural restoration. Going through COVID, many of you lost many things. But how many of us know God will repay you what the years that the locusts have